Today I'm going to read you a story that we all know, Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. And this book has pop-ups and sound effects. So it begins. Mr and Mrs Darling had three children, Wendy, John and Michael. On the fateful night, Mr and Mrs Darling had gone out to dinner. Most evenings, the Darling's prim old dog, Nana, kept an eye on her charges from her bed in the nursery. But that night, Mr Darling had decided she should sleep outside. So, when a tiny light flew in through the nursery's open window, Nana could do nothing but bark and bark and bark. The light began darting about the nursery, flitting inside jars and into open drawers. The next moment, in flew a young boy, dressed in a tunic of leaves. It was none other than Peter Pan. Tink, have you found my shadow? he called. And in reply came a lovely sound, like the tinkling of tiny bells. Tinkerbell, because of course, that is who the light was, told him to look for it in the chest of drawers. In a flash, the drawers were open and there it was, the missing shadow. Peter tried to stick it on with soap, but the wretched thing would not stay. His angry sobs woke up Wendy. Boy, she said, why are you crying? Peter introduced himself, bowing politely. When Wendy found out he didn't have a mother, she felt very sorry for him and immediately offered to sew his shadow back on. Then set to work with a needle and thread. Reunited with his shadow, Peter danced around the room. Wendy offered to give him a kiss to celebrate. But he didn't know what a kiss was. So that he would not feel silly, Wendy told Peter her thimble was a kiss and gave it to him. He looked at it for a moment and then solemnly gave Wendy an acorn in return, which she hung around her neck. Peter told Wendy all about his home, a place called Neverland, full of fairies and mermaids and pirates, and his loyal band of friends, the Lost Boys. He introduced Tinkerbell, who called her a great ugly girl, but luckily Wendy couldn't understand fairy language. Peter said he had lost his shadow, when he came to the nursery to hear a bedtime story. When Wendy said she knew many stories herself, he begged her to come back to Neverland with him. At first she said no, but when John and Michael woke up and found out Peter could teach them how to fly, it was all decided. He sprinkled fairy dust on them and told them to think happy thoughts. No, nothing happened at first, but with a little practice and, I'm sorry to say, Without a second thought for their poor parents, the children zoomed up and out of the nursery window. Neverland and the Shot Where is Neverland, Peter? asked Wendy. Second to the right and straight on till morning, cried Peter. But as they flew across the sleeping city and out over the sea, it became clear that the journey would take them much longer than a night. Sometimes it was dark and sometimes it was light, but none of them knew how long they flew. There it is, said Peter at last, where all the arrows are pointing. And indeed, the sun was pointing a million golden arrows at an island. They had finally reached Neverland. The children pointed out places they knew from dreams and Peter told them of the pirate leader, Captain Hook. He was Blackbeard's bosun, said Peter, and he has a fearsome hook where his right hand should be. The only thing that he's afraid of is the crocodile who ate that hand. It took a liking to him and follows him around, trying to eat the rest of him. Luckily for Hook, the crocodile also swallowed a clock, so you can always tell when it is near from the ticking. Just then, Tinkerbell told Peter that the pirates had seen them and were aiming to shoot them with Long Tom, their biggest gun. Because fairy light might give away their position, Tink held 
hid in Michael's hat, which Wendy carried. Suddenly there was the most tremendous crash. Long Tom blew the little group apart, the wind from the shop blasting John and Michael one way, Wendy another, and Peter far out to sea. Wendy and Tink decided to fly towards Peter's house, but the fairy was so jealous of her because the big girl knew all sorts of stories and was now Peter's favourite, that she began pinching poor Wendy until she cried. Far below, all the lost boys, Tootles, Curly, Slightly, the twins and Nibs were waiting for Peter to come home and heard Wendy's cries. A great white bird's flying this way, shouted Nibs. What kind of bird do you think? asked Slightly. I don't know, said Nibs, but it's making an awful din. Now they could also hear Tinkerbell's shrill voice. Peter wants you to shoot the Wendy. I think there are birds called Wendy's, said Curly eagerly. Tootles had his bow and arrow with him. Out of the way, Tink, he cried and fired. The arrow hit its target and Wendy fluttered to the ground. A terrible silence fell upon the woods. This is no bird, said Slightly. I think it must be a lady. Peter must have brought her, said Curly, a lady to take care of us and you have killed her. It was just at this tragic moment that Peter arrived. I'm back, boys, he cried. Why don't you all cheer? I have brought you a mother for you at last. But no boy made a sound. Have you seen her? I will show you, Peter, said Tootles quietly. Peter knelt down beside Wendy and picked up the arrow. Whose arrow? he asked sternly. Mine, Peter, said Tootles. Peter raised his fist, but someone stopped him. It was Wendy. She had raised her arm to stop Peter's hand. The Wendy lives, cried Nibs. Look, said Peter, pointing at the acorn that hung around Wendy's neck. The arrow struck the kiss I gave her, and it saved her life.